So there are two major frequent flyer programs in Australia, Qantas and Virgin. But which one do you choose or do you get both? In this video, we'll break it all down and do a full comparison between both major programs to help you decide which program is best for you. So how much does it actually cost to join one of these programs? Well, when it comes to Virgin, it's actually absolutely free. On the other hand, Qantas does have a joining fee of $99.50. However, there are multiple ways to join the Qantas Frequent Flyer program for free. Qantas often runs promotions with their brand partners for free memberships to the Qantas Frequent Flyer program. You can get a complimentary membership when you sign up to the Woolworths Everyday Rewards program. Existing Frequent Flyer members can also invite their family members for a free membership. And you can also get a free membership whenever you sign up to a Qantas Frequent Flyer credit card or a Qantas Travel Money card. So if you are looking to sign up to the program, make sure you don't pay the fee because it's not really necessary with all of the ways to get free membership. Now, overall, Virgin is slightly ahead here because there's actually no annual fee at all. However, given the fact that there's multiple ways to get a free membership with Qantas as well, we'll call this one a draw and give both programs one point each. Now, next, let's talk about the travel destinations because there is a difference here. Overall, Qantas does fly to more destinations than Virgin. However, there are still plenty of destinations that you can go to with Virgin Airlines. So let's break it all down. Domestically, with Qantas, you can travel to over 80 different destinations. And internationally, there are 27 destinations across 14 countries. Virgin, on the other hand, has 42 domestic locations and 15 international destinations across 11 different countries. So Qantas definitely has more coverage, especially in Northern America and Europe, offering more flight locations, flight times, and destinations in comparison to Virgin. It also has the advantage of being a part of the One World Alliance, so you can do connected bookings with a whole lot of other airlines. Virgin doesn't have any alliance memberships, but it does have partnerships with a number of major airlines, including Singapore, Etihad, and Qatar. So overall, from a travel destination perspective, I think it's a no-brainer that Qantas wins out here, simply due to the fact that they have a broader range of destinations that you can travel to, and this is further magnified when you take into account their partner airlines. Next, let's move on to reward flights and carrier surcharges. I'd guess that one of the main reasons as to why you're thinking about joining one of these frequent flyer programs is to begin accumulating frequent flyer points so that you can redeem them for travel on your next holiday. So let's do a full comparison between both airlines to understand how much it actually costs to book reward flights and also the carrier surcharges that come with those reward flights. So when it comes to redeeming reward seats, this is a rough breakdown of how much it will cost you in terms of frequent flyer points based on how far you're traveling. We can see that for economy seats, short haul domestic flights, Virgin and Qantas are pretty much on par. But there's an advantage to Qantas when we move to longer haul international flights with Qantas requiring almost 20% less points to fly from Brisbane to LA. However, it's a different story when it comes to business class seats, with Qantas being significantly more costly across the board. Now, what about carrier surcharges? Now, it's important to note that carrier surcharges only exist to benefit the airline themselves. These are separate to airport taxes, which are mandatory taxes that need to be paid on all flights. Carrier surcharges aren't mandatory and are determined by the airlines themselves. Now, for the longest time, it was common knowledge that Virgin definitely had a lower surcharges in comparison to Qantas, which was always kind of known to have high surcharges for their reward seats. However, Virgin announced last year that they were going to increase their carrier surcharges by up to 185% on all reward seat redemptions. So let's see a full breakdown of the carrier surcharges between both airlines. So we can see that Virgin is pretty much on par now with Qantas in terms of carrier surcharges for pretty much all routes. There are some slight differences when it comes to business class for the more medium haul and long haul flights, but overall, I think there's marginal difference between the two now. Overall, we'll call this a draw between Qantas and Virgin. Next, let's talk about frequent flyer status. So reaching elite frequent flyer status definitely brings about a lot of benefits whenever you're traveling. This includes lounge access, priority boarding, bonus points, and extra baggage allowance. 
Both the Velocity and Qantas Frequent Flyer programs all have silver, gold, and platinum status levels across both programs, with Qantas also having an additional status level of Platinum 1, which Virgin doesn't have. Now, Frequent Flyer status is obtained by accumulating status credits over a 12-month period. Status credits are earned by flying, with the amount of status credits earned determined by how far you're traveling to and also the cabin class that you're traveling in. So if you're traveling in premium economy or business class, you're going to be earning more status credits. And if you're also doing more longer haul flights, you're also going to be earning more as well. Once you've reached a certain frequent flyer status level, the amount of status credits that you'll need the following year to maintain that level is also reduced as well, making it easier for you to maintain that status level. So how difficult is it to achieve elite frequent flyer status across both programs? Let's break it all down for you. So we can see across all tiers that you need significantly more status credits for Qantas in order to move up each tier. At silver, there's only a 50 point difference, but as you move up to gold and then platinum, the difference becomes quite stark. But how about the earn rate of status credits between Qantas and Virgin? That will definitely pay a part because if you're earning twice as many status credits for the same flight for a Qantas flight in comparison to a Virgin, then perhaps it won't be as bad. So these are how many status credits you'd earn on some very common flights between Qantas and Virgin. So overall, it's pretty much the same across the board. For some flight paths, Virgin gives you more status credits, but for others, Qantas does. I will point out, however, that Virgin does offer less points for one of the most common flight paths between Sydney and Melbourne, which is where I would expect most travelers to be accumulating most of their status credits. Overall, when it comes to obtaining frequent fly status, I would say that Virgin Virgin comes out ahead here because it is easier to obtain that elite frequent fly status of Platinum. Qantas does offer the ability to obtain lifetime statuses for both their silver and gold frequent fly status. However, you need to be traveling pretty frequently, pretty much on a weekly basis to ever be able to accumulate enough status credits for those lifetime statuses. So next, let's talk about family pooling. This is essentially the concept of being able to pool your frequent flyer status credits and also your frequent flyer points together as a family. Virgin Australia allows family pooling, which allows you to pool together your frequent flyer points and status credits to one beneficiary for family members living at the same address. Up to six family members are allowed with points and status credits automatically being transferred to the beneficiary. So for example, let's say your family went on one international trip each year, family pooling enables you to pool together all the status credits that everyone earned to one single account, enabling that person to obtain an elite frequent fly status easier. On the other hand, Qantas doesn't have automatic family pooling. However, you are able to transfer frequent flyer points between family members. The amount of transfers that you can do each year are unlimited. However, there is a cap of up to 600,000 frequent flyer points that you can transfer over a 12 month period. So in this category, Virgin Australia wins with the ability to set up automatically family pooling, especially of status credits, which enables you know, individuals with Virgin to obtain elite statuses much more easier. So both Qantas and Virgin Australia both have their own pros and cons with a lot of similarities as well. Both programs are so competitive that there really isn't one clear winner in my opinion, which is actually probably a good thing. It's important to consider the differences between the Qantas Frequent Flyer Program and the Virgin Frequent Flyer Program to understand which one is best suited towards you, where you will get the most benefit from. Factors such as airline partnerships, the way you earn and redeem points, and the travel destinations will all play a part as to which frequent flyer program is best for you. Instead of trying to determine which program is best overall, use the information in this video to determine which frequent flyer program is best suited towards you in your own circumstances. My advice would be to simply sign up to both and focus on one program and then just use the other one when you aren't able to use your primary program. I've got a few videos where I talk about redeeming Qantas Frequent Flyer Points for maximum value and also how you can earn Qantas Frequent Flyer Points quicker. So make sure you check those videos out after this video as well. Hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more, and let me know which program you think is best for you.